So you're framing the risks not as financial, but as geopolitical. What do you mean? We've looked at risk in a financial mode for the last 10 years, since 2008. The world has been very disciplined about evaluating risk. Uh, central banks, interest rates, inflation, unemployment, it's been very rigorous. We now, of course, risk is, of course, are taking on a much different phase, namely driven heavily by technology. But the real sort of elephant in the room is all the personalities that have emerged globally. It's probably about a dozen personalities in the world, obviously the most noted being Donald Trump, but then it quickly follows with um, Putin, Erdogan, Xi, um, Modi, uh, and then we can list many more, Duterte, and of course we had the Brazilian president here yesterday. So we've got a lot of strong personalities. So we are in what I keep referring at this Davos in a uh, probably the worst geopolitical recession that we've had in a long time. And people are having a hard time trying to evaluate geopolitical risk because we haven't had to deal with it before. A geopolitical recession, do, does that filter through to the real economy and to the markets? I think what you, well, yes, it does. Uh, it does in terms of short term, uh, number one. Uh, you see a lot more volatility in markets. Uh, number two, the media, social media, people like you and, and your colleagues play a big role in that because you talk about things. Uh, earlier this week in Davos, for example, remember the Chinese government came out with this GDP. There was in, initially a bit of a shock. It was whatever it was, 6.6 .6 and whatever. People were saying it was declining. Well, it was the worst year, I think, since the 90s. Right. But the Chinese government, to, to give it its due, has been expanding uh, economically for 40 years, and uh, they have taken a billion people out of poverty. So they, and they are a class act in terms of knowing how to run a government and an economy. So it's very important that during this period of geopolitical risk, people don't overreact. They take a little more time, pace themselves. Um, but I would also say that some of these personalities, uh, people like President Xi, for example, in his negotiations with uh, Donald Trump, you know, he's a very wise man he's a very patient man and uh, i'm i'm sure he's he's will take a long-term view about china's relationship with the united states do you predict that the trade war will be solved they will make a deal and this will all be resolved by march yeah i i think they will come up with some type of understanding uh and to satisfy both parties but i think the real um issue is the fact that america is going to have to live with the fact that China is going to be the biggest economy in the world between 2025 and 2030. And China then needs to rethink its own role in the world. And most importantly, technology is going to be the, is the big piece on the chessboard here. Because is it going to be two technology worlds or one? And will the Microsofts of the world or the Huawei's of the world or these other big players, will they play a dominant role? Or will we have two separate sets of technologies and two separate sets of companies. Yeah, well, the I mean, certainly a place like Davos, the theme is all about coordinating those types of policies. Do you think this, this so-called geopolitical recession has impacted corporate confidence and investing? You speak to so many different global CEOs. Um, I think what's happened is a couple of things. One, people have been delighted with the um, performance over the last 10 years. A lot of people are looking at volatility and there's been more movement into cash and cash equivalents. There's more movement into uh, people not people looking at the volatility of the stock market and being a little more cautious about overreacting to short-term swings. Um, I think the market also is telling people that as they look around the world, uh, they have made a lot of money in the last 10 years, and yet the next recession, when it comes, and of course most of the pundits there's a lot of pundits here at uh, Davos. <laughs> say it couldn't. It's probably not going to be 2019. It probably will be 2020. But I think we all know that if something is likely to be 2020, it's really going to be 2021 or 2019.